All right, guys, so what we want to do today is talk to you a little bit about glandular scents. And I think the thing that we need to do, Easton, is we need to educate people on what are they, where do they come from, why are they so important, why have we started employing these rather than doe urines have been around forever. I mean, there's a bunch of companies making them, um, but glandular scents are doing something different, and that's how we got into this. So I think let's start with talking about a little bit about well, maybe the background behind it is every every deer hunter out there, whether you're brand new or whether you're a veteran, you, I mean, if you've hunted at all, you've probably seen a deer make a scrape or seen the results of a deer making a scrape or you've seen a rub tree where a deer has taken his antlers and rubbed it on there. We used to think that those bucks were rubbing those trees just for that purpose. Antler was what was going on. <clears throat> now we've realized it's really not near as much about the antlers as it is about the forehead. We've seen deers that deer deers. We've seen deer that look like they're eating limbs, but yet the limbs are still there. Well, we've realized that there's a salivary gland that they're actually utilizing. And then there's other stuff where they're just rubbing their head on there, and that could be preorbital that they're utilizing there. Now there's other glands. There's the inner tar the metatarsal, the tarsal gland, there's the interdigital gland, um, <clears throat> and there's some other glands, but these are the primary ones that they're using. And I think we've got to give people an understanding of why they're so important. And so you've done some research on some of them. So let's talk a little bit about the glands themselves. So I think the first thing that people need to understand is that this is literally like if I were to hand you my license and you get my height, my age, my weight, every little bit of information you can off of that license right. is basically what the majority of these are telling other deer. Um, and so with a herd, as, let's, like if we use your farm for instance, there might be I don't know, what do you think, a couple hundred deer that live right oh, yeah, here in this that, area? That live, to, you know, they may not stay here all the time, but yeah, yeah we got a couple But they're familiar here. with each other. Yes. The majority of those deer know each other's scent because they each have a specific one. Each one has different chemicals mixed in with each gland that is allowing each deer, if I were to meet a David or he were to meet me, just solely off of their tracks, basically. So when a deer's walking around, they're leaving scent, they're leaving at, from their inner digital gland, he would be able to walk by and say, hey, that's Easton. I know who that deer is. And what we use these for is because most of these, well, there's really no way it wouldn't be, but these glands that we're making are natural, but they're different deer. So when me and him are in a we're herd, introducing deer that we're they putting, have seen. putting a new deer into this place that is like, they're like, okay, I don't know who that one is. And even though we think that the does and fawns and bucks and all, all these deer look different or look the same, they know each other based off of smell, not because they're a doe, not because they're a fawn or this is a huge buck, whatever it is. It's all off of their scent and their glands. Um, so we really have to understand what they're saying with each individual well, one. Well, let's talk the, about, let's just start at the top of the head. Let's just say we'll go from there. We'll go head to tail. Yep. And so the forehead gland, obviously it's located in the forehead. It actually says that. And I, the best way that I can describe this for someone to understand is a lot of times you'll look at a deer's head and it'll be orange. And that's where they've been rubbing trees. But when you feel that, when you run your hand across their head, you can feel it's kind of oily. Yep. And so, well, the, you just said right there that when you get the orange, that orange or darker faces, you've a lot of people say it's either just from rubbing trees. Other people say it's because it's an old deer. It has nothing to do with the age of the deer or what color is on their forehead necessarily. But when the more they're rubbing the trees, the more oil and the more um, that gland that is gland producing using, yeah. which is making it a darker color and producing that smell but those that that specific gland the forehead gland tells other deer when they're rubbing those on trees when a mature buck or any buck for that matter a mature more mature buck is going to have a stronger more potent smell for one and it's going to last a lot longer as opposed to your younger deer so when a doe comes walking by or another buck comes walking by when they smell the previous buck that was there they're getting their age from it. They're getting their, um, whether they're ready to breed, now, their breeding status. Is this uh, one of the ones that they can actually tell the health of the deer? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Nope. All right. So, so the forehead gives them a lot of information, basically. And this is one that is a lot, it's kind of similar to your metatarsal as far as the, it's kind of a, I guess it's not necessarily super related to a metatarsal, but it's really telling you their dominance. Okay. So the next one as we come down would be the 
or preorbital gland, which is basically the tear duct of, and that, that's one that I think people can re understand a little better because they see it. Yep. You can actually see sometimes the secretion in the corner of their eye. And a lot of them, if you can find the actual spot, you can see where each they gland is actually at too. Though. Yes. Yep. The, the one that I find interesting about the preorbital is that it is the most controlled out of the, all of them. So they literally control that with a muscle. So they can open that, close that, emit the scent that they want, the amount of scent they want, basically, and all of them use it. So the majority, the other thing about these glands is pretty much a doe, fawn, buck. They'll all use these glands, just as dependent on how much they're using it and necessarily what they're using it for. But the preorbital is another marker as far as I'm believing this on this tree here. We see them rubbing their eyes on trees and limbs and a lot of places where they're using their salivary gland as well um, to basically say, hey, this is, that's going to give them another, an, all these other deer, another specific scent to who they are and that they are leaving a mark saying, I was here. The, this is the, kind of my the, area. The cool thing about all these is whether it's the forehead, whether it's the orbital gland, the preorbital gland, um, when we get to the salivary gland is when you start going back and watching, if you got video like we do or trail cam video and you actually can see that what you were looking at before didn't make sense because it doesn't make sense to us. We mm -hmm. don't use our glands. We've lost that capability in our, now we use a knife and a fork and, and things like that. We don't, we don't rely. Our glands swell and when we're sick and things like that. But these animals are actually using these glands to communicate. That's how, literally how, they, how me and you are talking right now. That's right. exactly how, that's how communicative they are together with just sense. Gotcha. So the next one we go to is the salivary gland. Okay, so this is in the mouth. This is where you see animals, and I've seen multiple deer, and I used to think that they were just always nibbling on the trees, and they were just not getting very much because I'd see the leaf was still there yeah. or part of the limb was there, but that's not the case. No, so really what they're doing is the only reason they're chewing on those branches is because, which um, if, they, if you guys have watched any of our other videos, I know he's talked about it with rub, very similar to rub trees. When they're scraping those trees open and getting their scent put into the rub tree, then it's, it's staying in the tree better and they find different areas where like those soft woods right. are going to hold scent better well when they're biting on those limbs they're ba literally if you think about it Makes they're kind sense. of injecting their saliva them. so yep. their saliva is obviously coating their teeth when they bite into this the limb they know it's going to last longer and it's going to be stronger when another deer comes by hmm. that makes perfect sense Okay, so then we get to the rear end of the deer. We'll, we'll kind of go to the back end, and that's the tarsal or the metatarsal glands. And it's there's a difference. There people is. need that's, to understand and that. I've heard all sorts of people say metatarsal and tarsal together, thinking it's just a longer word for it. It's completely different. Um, the tarsal is my one of the most interesting ones to me because it tells you the most. Right. I always thought, and I think that you could probably say the same, but you've obviously learned a lot now, um, that tarsal glands were just what was holding the urine when a buck is like when you see a buck rubbing their back legs together that's that's what they call rub urinating and really the urine isn't what's producing the smell as much as the tarsal gland is actually an odorless gland it doesn't produce any odor at all but all the fat and the um oil. Fair, the oil that is producing from those right. hair follicles are mixing with the urine when they pee down their leg and they rub it all together is making that pheromone which once that oil mixes with the urine brings out the scent that we're smelling gotcha um and the other th thing that's really interesting that's the one that you were talking about earlier that you mentioned that is one that when another deer smells say whoever's whatever deer they're smelling they get multiple things they're getting their age they're getting their health um which is extremely interesting if you if they can literally tell their health status of another deer um they're telling their dominance whether they're male, female, dominant buck, whether they, uh, is it, Do they get into like understanding whether a deer is coming into estrus and that kind of thing yep. from the doe? Bucks are even ready to mate. They can tell another buck can tell that another buck is. Yeah, and that so that everybody always thinks that the bucks are chasing the does right. and trying to get to the does. Well, a lot of times that tarsal gland will tell does that a buck is ready to breed, and as long gotcha. as the doe is ready to breed, she's like, okay, I got, I have a mate right here. I'm ready to go. All right, so then, and, and I think what everyone would understand, the tarsal gland is the one that a bunch of us have cut them off um, to use. They, a, they have the theory that they'll ruin your meat. They'll ruin your meat, so you Not cut it true. off after <laughs> you killed it. But but it, it's because the odor is so strong, I think is why people mm -hmm. thought that or think that. Um, but you can actually cut those off, and you can use that by, you're, you're telling deer in an area that you've introduced a whole new deer. The, I think the one, the reason why most of us gravitate to that is because it's, we can smell it yep. and if we can smell it then we can notice it but there's a lot of things going on here that we can't see smell 
but yep. it, but it's still there. Okay, so then the metatarsal is on the outside of it's just that little white yep. dot. If, if you ever pay attention to it, it's uh, about five six inches above the hoof on the back of a leg, the back of their back leg, and it's just like it almost grows the opposite way. Right. Um, and the more you look into it, it doesn't do as much as um, some of these other ones, except for during higher times of the year like the rut, certain times like that, because when those bucks are using that, it's extremely aggressive is what that smell is. So like I, w I would always think that a rutted up buck smells like their tarsal gland, and that's what's going to make another buck be like, okay, I'm going to come over here and beat you up because you're right. not supposed to be in my area. Well, that metatarsal is what's producing the smell that is the aggression level and the dominant buck. Gotcha. So, All right, and then the last one is the inner digital. And, I, and the inner digital is located between the hoofs of a deer. And I think it's in all four of the, the yep, hooves. Yeah, all four of them. The, the issue that you have to be careful with re replicating that one is that one is a big danger sign. Mm -hmm. And it can be. And when they're stomp, and we've, uh, I mean, if you've hunted at all, you've seen a deer stomp its foot and then seen another deer get to a certain point, won't go near it. Well, um, the thing is about that, though, is it's not just a danger. Because that, that is one scent that they probably smell the most out of all of them. Because they use that all inner the digital. Time. Every single time they take a step, they're releasing just a little bit. And that's almost, that's, that's your real ID, I, I feel like. If you really look into each gland, different times of the year, they're using it more here, more there. They're pretty much all being used throughout the year, just more in certain areas. Interdigital is always, every time, every time they take a step, and it's also telling them that that gives them every bit they need as far as who this deer is. Gotcha. So that is like your main key card of this is blank deer this is blank deer um but it's just the amount that you have to be careful with that, okay like when they stomp like you said that that's that's a massive danger sign so again just to kind of recap there's basically five different glands that were referred that we have felt like they're the best ones to replicate to be able to communicate with deer ourselves and that would we start at the forehead we go to the preorbital, we go to the mouth with the salivary gland then we go to the tarsal gland the metatarsal we're not really replicating because um, it just doesn't have all the signs. We're able to do it through the tarsal gland, yep. and then the in, and then the inter, inner digital gland. And the other one we're not even touching with. It doesn't really have much effect. Would be the nasal gland. Gotcha. But that's pretty much for them to to right. scout us out. Okay. So. Gotcha. All right. Well, so <clears throat> the next thing that we want to do is we will show you or kind of talk about why we've made the sense we've made in the glandular forms, so that you can go out and use. We're going to use their communication against them. Yep. Or we're try gonna, to. We're going to try to basically talk to them like they would be talking to each other. All right. So let's go through these one at a time. So, okay. well, I say one at a time. Scrape, scrape queen, scrape king. Yep. Those are our preorbital scents. For buck Pre and a doe. Right. So yep. scrape queen obviously is the doe. Scrape king is the, is the buck. But we've captured the preorbital glandular scent and put it into a bottle form where it's a spray or a paste. That we can utilize to tell deer those we can communicate with deer through the preorbital. Yep. But what we have said in some of these how-to videos, and I just we got to stress it like no other, is that the majority of these glands we can't actually smell as a human what right. they smell like. So when we're extracting, say the preorbital, that is in it. That's like if you take your vanilla extract, it's extremely potent. And so when we can smell this, that means you're probably using a lot. So you need to make sure that when you're putting the, these things out that you're not overdoing it um, because it is so, we have made less it so is, pure. Less is more. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people don't realize that. And granted, some some different products aren't as pure as this. This is right. about, as, this is like 99% pure with just a little bit to be able to make it spray. Gotcha. That's it. All right, so, th so that would be the um, next one that we go to is the Scrape King. and I and Scrape the, Addict. Or Scrape Addict, yep. I'm sorry. And the scrape addict is our way of making mock scrapes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken some of the, this one's a mixture. This one has a little bit of all the glands that we talked about put into there, but not too much because if you put too much of, of the inner digital, let's say, then you're going to, you're going to, it's going to alarm deer. them instead yeah, of calm them down. Absolutely. But with the scrape addict, for sure, is if you ever pay attention to a deer making a scrape, you might think that they're just licking the branch or they're just scraping the ground or whatever it is. When you really look into it, they're using all, all five right. or six different glands all at once. Um, the m main five is what they're really using. So they're using everything that we have here. So we've put all those, just a little bit of each one, within the scrape attic for uh, mock scrapes. So you can be creating your own scrapes and be able to mimic that the best you can. So. All right. And then the, 
Well, well before we go to LHD, because LHD to me is different. I think it's kind of separate than all of them. It is. So let's go to the Buck Junkie. And the Buck Junkie is it's kind of our pride and joy. Yep. You so know? I think this is this one is pretty interesting that you you came up with this based off of what you've watched your Absolutely. watched your deer doing. But the buck junk you've basically come up with is from what I can tell is that you from watching your deer, how they're acting and what gland you're seeing those and then you're studying the glands and seeing, okay, I think they're using these two main glands for this. And 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 the rub tree is really what got me on I mean, when we started putting in rub trees and started seeing the reaction, then when I put in rub trees and I started putting just the preorbital on it on there. Yep. And I thought I wonder as I was watching, like you said, the videos and I'm watching the trail cam videos that we've accomplished acquiring i'm realizing that man if i could replicate what they're doing because these deer are up there and they're rubbing their forehead and they're they'll even lick the tree at some point and they're not it really has very little to do with their antlers so when i'm i was watching these deer and they're coming to scrapes or they're coming to my rubs and i thought that the antlers are what you know i'm just going to watch them basically beat up on a tree, tree yeah. but then what I notice is they're not necessarily, I mean, they spend a lot of time rubbing that forehead on there. So we wanted a way to be able to commu give that communication signal and the buck junkie is what we've come up with. And I think we freaking hit it. I think so too. And I think it's going to be, we've already started to get results with it. Absolutely. And it's mid July. Right. And we're already seeing stuff, seeing it actually work. Right. Um, but that, that right there proves that too, they are always, again, they're always using these things. They're always using these different glands. It's just a matter of how much they're using them. But this one specifically, really the only time that they're not going to be using that forehead gland when they're rubbing trees is getting velvet off their antlers pretty right. much. Yeah, that, Other than that, though, they're basically rubbing that tree with their antlers to scrape a, to basically open it up and hold the scent that they're putting in. So, and I think just, you've, ex you've found that. I, a lot of people wouldn't have thought of that. Well, all, it was so. just observation is all. All right, so now we'll go to LHD, the Lonely Hot Doe. Um, this is basically... We know guys and gals are going to want to have something during the hunting season that's going to run these deer right by them or when they're walking in, something that a deer could track them in and things yeah. like that. And as much as it is separate from kind of how we've made these, it is also separate from your typical doe urine. Um, we didn't just put doe urine in it. to um, one, one thing that is not useful, and most people or a lot of people know that doe urine only last or any urine for that matter only lasts for a certain amount of time before, before it turns it into down. ammonia when it turns into ammonia then it's like you're basically working against yourself if you're using it you don't notice um so we've added we've done the dough urine and heat but we've also added glands glandular scents into it as well to be able to mimic more of not necessarily just a hot dough but a specific hot dough that is walking through the woods so that um, it's a little more realistic and it's also going to last longer than what your typical just straight urine would last. So, so if you're not familiar with glandular scents, you need to get familiar with glandular scents. If you're a whitetail hunter and, and you aren't using them, you're going to want to start. And we think that you'll want to start with one of these. So check out all this stuff. We got it in written form. We got individual videos for each one on how to use it, when to use it. Um, even how to take care of it so that this stuff will last you longer than a year because because like Easton said you don't use a whole bunch of it so it should last you a long time um, and so anyhow there's just a ton of things to go over we hope that you guys um, will get some of the results like what we've gotten I, there's just no way you can't I mean I can just tell you from using them myself there's just no way um, if you use them and you use them correctly you'll get the results that you're looking for